Hi, I'm Ed Chung. Um, I'm an internal medicine physician and I also I have been years. Again, I'm doing a series of these videos to try to help others with Meniere's disease or want to learn about Meniere's disease, uh, understand some of the underlying treatments and causes and pathology of Meniere's disease. Um, and especially it's a, a subject that's sort of dear to my heart when I have this. Um, so today I'm going to talk, this video is dedicated specifically to just one, one category of medications that we use that, that is sort of controversial for Meniere's disease. Um, and that is steroids. So that, that, that is steroids. Um, you know, steroids are probably one of the more controversial medications for Meniere's disease because in many, many studies, it's still very unclear whether there's a true benefit or not for them. Um, however, there are circum certain circumstances when they are beneficial. Um, the way steroids work, or when we use them all the time in medicine, are the steroids you often think or you read in the paper about steroids being like these things that bulk people up and cause them to be you know angry and they get like muscle builders get steroids well steroids are a category of medications that we use all the time um, that are naturally produced um, hormones that your body creates and the steroids are, are, are uh, these little complex little series of little tiny rings that your body produces um, from your adrenal glands and the adrenal glands are these little glands these tiny little things that are right above the kidneys um, Steroids can be produced in other areas like the different organ systems like your your testes and your and your ovaries But there's many different types of steroids um, But anyways these organs in your in your body creates these different types of steroids and all these steroids are this category of medication medication or actually natural producing hormone um, circulates in your entire body and system and the way they work is they in, they actually get into all the individual cells in your body and they regulate the way the body grows multiplies reproduces and the way the the body processes things okay so there's many different types of steroids there's steroids that regulate your hormones as far as like through menopause um, your fertility and your virility uh, there's steroids that are called anabolic steroids that help uh, build up muscle mass. That's like you know some testosterone growth hormone. There's steroids that regulate um, your overall metabolism, how, how well you feel. However, uh, the main type of steroids that we use that we use are um, the type that are produced in the adrenal gland, and and the, the steroids have two different main major properties. One of the major properties of the steroids is called a, a mineral corticoid. And, and then the other one is called adrenal corticoid. Well, I won't go into the details, but the bottom line is that this main type of steroid that we use for, for Meniere's, but for all different things, uh, um, are an anti-inflammatory. So these type of steroids is a multiple complex ring. It's, it, and your body naturally produces this steroid. So it's not like this is some kind of foreign substance. Your body probably produces about 10 to 15 milligrams of, this, of, of equivalent prednisone, quote, um, which is one of the oral steroids we give, dosing per day. And you need a certain low level of, of steroids or a, a level of steroids for your body to function. Okay, Without these steroids that your body normally, these hormones that your body normally produces, you will not be able to function and you'll probably have a circulatory collapse and die. So steroids are not something to be feared and they're not something that, that you absolutely should not take or, or you should be worried about because they are a natural production of your body and system and they're needed. However, what happens in medicine, the way we give steroids is we give extremely high doses of it to sort of suppress the inflammatory response, okay? And it, in just the, the treatment with steroids itself is a little controversial because steroids can be good in that if, if the, the body is having an abnormal, irregular, inflammatory immune response steroids work very well to suppress them but at the same time steroids at high doses have longer term very severe consequences and side effects and one of the major consequences side effects of, the, of especially higher dose steroids are uh, develops um, glucose intolerance which is diabetes you have severe weight retention water and weight retention you develop a uh, uh, abnormal deposits of body fat throughout the system and you have um, overall 
uh, irritability and insomnia and, and, and others just multiple different smaller symptoms with the steroids so it's it's a double-edged sword it sort of helps but at the same time and, and it works really well in certain very very specific conditions but at the same time you're, you're running the line of, of running a severe infection or being being immunocompromised being on the steroids so in Meniere's itself so I'm gonna go into Meniere's itself um, there's through multiple multiple studies it's still very, very, very unclear whether the Meniere's is, whether in Meniere's um, the steroids are going to help. Um, and, and, and I think the reason for this is that um, you have to think about what the underlying reason or cause for the Meniere's. Okay? I think there's three actual true indications if you have a certain type of Meniere's that steroids actually truly are helpful and beneficial. And the first reason is if the inner ear, remember the, 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 the cochlea and the balance centers, if any reason that inner ear area is inflamed, and um, inf and think of it this way. I'm going to show an example. Think, think of this like your cochlea, your inner ear, your hearing area, your balance center, and those little tubes with the fluid. If you have true classic Meniere's, what happens is that the fluid gets into the, 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 the inner ear area, and then what happens is, is that little inner ear gets very, very swollen. It goes, it gets enlarged. And then with that swelling and enlargement, all those little nerves that are attached to this become inflamed and agitated. And then as the fluid gets pulled out and it goes back to normal, if you notice the balloon shrinks back down, but it doesn't come back down completely to normal. This is called compliance and the compliance decreases. Well, this shifting and stretching of, of, of those middle ear cells causes inflammation. So during an attack and when it, it gets very, very severe and then the fluid comes out, there's probably some fluctuation and inflammation in, 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 of these little inner cells. So if you give steroids during that time period, I'm sure that there's some effect of decreasing the amount of inflammation, the amount of swelling you have and perhaps helping with Meniere's. So that's one indication. The second real indication for steroids um, is that the person has an underlying autoimmune disease. And as I put it out in previous video, about 10% of patients will have blood test labs or other evidence of some underlying, underlying autoimmune disease. Now what an autoimmune disease is, is the person produces certain proteins that attack their own it cells themselves so what happens is your own body your immune system that helps protect you against infection and, and and foreign cuts and so on it does not recognize your own body cells and it recognizes it being foreign and then what happens is it attacks your own inner ear cells and then there's an inflammatory response so what the steroids do is they suppress that inflammatory response and it suppresses the proteins and, and, and cause, underlying cause, release of uh, the inflammation. So that's the second reason why steroids may help with, with Meniere's. The third reason Meniere, uh, steroids may help with Meniere's is that steroids work extremely, extremely well for allergic reactions and allergies. And the way it works is they get into the cells themselves and they block sort of this, it's called histamine response. And it's thought that maybe one of the underlying keys, keys or reasons for uh, Meniere's is there's there's a release of this called histamine, which causes inflammation and swelling and, 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 and fluid retention in the um, in, in the in the ear. So those are those three major reasons major reasons why I think steroids may be helpful in certain situations, but in majority of cases, what I think probably happens is that I mean yours just swells, and even though there's swelling, there's just constant swelling but there's not inflammation. And so you give the steroids, if there's no inflammation, the steroids may not help. And if anything, possibly may increase the amount of fluid you get pulled into the ear and possibly couldn't, I mean, I'd not necessarily make it worse, but just not really help, okay? Um, so there's many different types of steroids that we use. Um, what they often recommend is if a person becomes acutely deaf and have severe tinnitus and ringing in the ears and acutely, acute deafness with possible vertigo, no vertigo, they often give a, a, a very quick oral dose of steroids. So they give like this high dose prednisone, de decadron, it's called, or, or prednisone, 
to sort of suppress any type of acute um, immunal response before until they can actually sort of try to figure out what the underlying cause is. So the, you can take the steroids by oral dosing. And so it's usually oral prednisone. That's what I have here, the prednisone. Um, sorry, um, prednisone. It's a tiny little white tablet. Tastes horrible, sort of bitter. But usually dosing for that is 20, 40, 60 milligrams. Sometimes they even give like 60 milligrams for usually a series of days, like four or five days, six days a week. Um, and then if the underlying cause of the Meniere's or any type of inflammatory response is thought to be autoimmune or sort of chronic, you can continue very, very low doses of that. Um, remember the natural normal hormonal production of your body is about 15 milligrams a day of this, of this prednisone. So your body naturally produces this, but um, what happens is that by taking the steroids by mouth, you're suppressing your own body's production of it. Um, and so that's why you have to give the higher doses of it. Uh, so the prednisone is one of the things they may give. They may give called a decadron, um, a dexamethasone it's called. That's another steroid. It's very, very potent. It's more potent than prednisone. It's not better, it's just more stronger in that it comes in one milligram, two milligrams, four milligrams, ten, ten, um, you know, 10 milligrams tablets. Um, there's prednisolone, it's another oral dosing. Um, and then there's cortisone. Um, cortisone is another oral dosing that usually people take to supplement if their kidneys are not producing or the body's not producing the normal amount of steroids. So th that's the oral dosing of steroids. The next way you can give steroids is for injection. And so you can actually give Kenalog, it's called, or Triamcinolone injection directly into the tympanic membrane. And so the difference between the oral dosing and the intratympanic membrane dosing is that if you take this by mouth, you get it to your entire body, your entire system, and every single organ system in your entire body um, will be affected by the steroids. If you give the injection directly into the ear, you can actually give probably... Um, a very much smaller dosing that does not affect the rest of your system and body, but at the same time give a much higher concentration, probably 10 to 100 times more concentrated, higher amount of dose into the inner ear. And the thought is that there's a quote dose response, meaning that the higher concentration, the higher amount of steroids you get in the inner ear area where the inflammation is, the the, the better or the, the the more response you're going to get, or the better suppression and, and, and improvement, if it's going to work. That's the that's the key. Now, again, multiple, multiple studies, plus, minus on the steroids. All the specialists are, um, ENT specialists are plus, minus on the steroids. Possible benefit, may not benefit. It is a intratympanic injection. They do have to numb up the ear. They have to cut up a little area. They have to inject the steroid into the ear. Some of the, the compound, not the steroid itself, but what the, the steroid is mixed with can cause uh, maybe about 1% to 3% chance of some deafness and inflammation and, and probably permanent damage to the inner ear. So it, this is not something to be taken lightly, but relative risk is relatively low. Um, but you know, when you're dizzy and you're sick and you're nauseous, you'll try anything. And uh, I have not personally had the steroid injection. I've thought about it, but um, uh, it's hard for me to say whether to recommend that or not. It, you're going to have to use your own judgment with your ear, your nose and throat doctor. And then the last couple other ways of, of getting steroids um, are by um, actually nasal spray. Um, there's this Flonase or Nasoril nasal spray. This actually um, is a prescription, but it's, it's relatively benign. Again, what you do is you, you, you put two little sprays in the nose. It does get into the sinuses. It helps. It works excellent and works very, very well for allergies. And um, I actually recommend everyone who does have who does have Meniere's to talk with your primary doctor. It does not have to be an ENT doctor, primary doctor, about getting a prescription for some Flonase or Nasoril steroid nasal spray. It does not get systemically involved, uh, absorbed, or maybe very minimally systemically absorbed but it can be very, very helpful and beneficial for suppressing allergies, which may be contributing to the, the underlying Meniere's. On top of that, there may be a small amount of it getting into the Meniere's. And then the last, last type of steroids, you buy this over the counter, it's called hydrocortisone cream. This is a steroid. Again, anti-inflammatory, rub on the skin, and um, it helps with inflammation. So that's my thoughts about steroids. I cannot recommend it one way or another. But um, 
Research it. Good luck.